Once you've set your blade to the correct height and your fence is at the right measurement, you're going to turn on the machine, grab your push stick, and push the left hand to get your fingers out of the red zone. If you can understand the last part of what was just said, you're in the same boat as many other CTE students. Generally, CTE classes are very loud. If we use voiceover on iMovie, it will allow me to hear more clearly and louder. One other thing that we've learned from the pandemic is that accessibility to materials is very hard to come by in some cases. Even outside of a pandemic year, having your demo be available online would be very beneficial because if someone were to miss a day of school, the teacher wouldn't have to show them a live demo again. They could just pull it up on their computer and watch it then. As a CTE student, it was extremely frustrating when my class time got cut short due to COVID-19. If my teacher used iMovie, it would allow me to be able to view my lessons before class, giving me more time during school hours to complete my assignments. Another benefit of doing demos over iMovie is being able to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do when students are present, such as taking blade guards off and things like that. It is something that we do need to learn how to do, but unfortunately we can't see a live demo of that for safety issues. With iMovie, we are able to see our teacher do it, and it's pretty cool. Lastly, iMovie is really easy to use. In fact, you could pick it up in less than a day. Let's get started. When you open iMovie, you will see this screen. To put videos or photos in your movie, click Import Media. It will bring you to this screen from which you can select anything you would like to add. When you've selected the ones you would like to start out with, click Import Selected. The videos will pop up in your media box here. You can always add or delete clips, so don't think that this is set in stone yet. Before we get too deep in the tutorials, I wanted to give you a quick tour of iMovie. This section over here deals with other projects and isn't very important to us right now. Over here, you have what we call the media box. It keeps track of all photos, videos, and audio clips you have imported. Along the top, you can also import music, titles, backgrounds for green screens, and transitions. We'll come back to most of this in a second. Down here is your timeline. The audio files go on the bottom, followed by videos and photos, then split screen clips, and text will always be on the top. This is your timeline cursor. It shows you where you are and allows you to go over one specific section if needed. You can hit play by using this arrow or the spacebar. We'll go over most of the rest of the buttons on the right hand side later, so stay tuned. And that's about there is to iMovie. It may seem like a lot at first, but you'll be able to catch on really quickly. Let's add some videos into our timeline. Click and drag videos from the media box onto your timeline like this. Right now, you will notice that the transition between the two clips is pretty choppy. That's because it's a straight cut. To fix this, let's go up to the transitions button at the top of the screen. It will pull up a bunch of these templates. You can preview them by dragging your mouse over them. When you find one you like, click and drag it in between the two clips you would like to have the transition. My computer has a hard time with a playback while we were doing a screencast, but there's a transition. If you aren't a fan of it, feel free to choose another one. Playing with transitions is really fun. Without further ado, I'll send you to the next section. Sometimes you might be explaining something and want to have two screens shown at once. This feature is similar to a screencast. Let's start by clicking and dragging the second clip over the first one. I'm going to crop that down a bit by moving the sides in. When we click on the top video, you'll notice that a new button appears that wasn't there when we only had our base layer. Go ahead and click on that button. There are multiple options here. You can do an overlay, which is sort of like having an instant transition, a green screen effect, which is a bit more advanced, a split screen where each section gets an equal part, or a picture in a picture, which is like a separate box. Here's an example of the split screen. You can organize the clips at any way that you would like. It will look something like this. The picture in a picture looks like this. You can make it bigger, smaller, or in a different place by clicking and dragging it. You can also adjust how it transitions in. This is what it looks like. Again, please excuse the choppiness. At this point in the video, you may be wondering how we're making all of these titles. I really enjoy using titles because they make every section or step defined and very clear. To add a title, click on the movie or photo clip. Select the Titles button at the top. 
This brings up a lot of different styles you can choose from. There's a little bit of everything here, from subtle titles to really fun and bold ones. Click on the one that looks good to you. Once you have selected, highlight the placeholder words and type in what you would like to say. Next, move the drop down to select a fun font. After that, you can adjust the size as shown here, as well as the position. The next three buttons also give you the option to bold, italicize, and outline your text. You can also pick a fun color. I'm going to do this fun TSA red with the outline. Lastly, I'm going to make the text to only take up part of the video. To do this, click anywhere on the timeline to exit out of the text bar. Now click on the purple text line and drag the edges to the desired position. Again, my computer is having a hard time with the playback while doing the screen recording, but on your computer, the preview will be smooth. That's all there is to adding titles. As mentioned before, voiceovers are something that have the potential to really improve demos in CTE shops. Right now, the audio is really loud. Let's add a voiceover. To add in a voiceover, click on the microphone. Click on the record button and it will count down. Say something like, this is our table saw demo, and click the save button to stop recording. The machine sound is still competing with your voice at this point. If you would like, you can click and drag the line in the blue section to adjust the volume. It can go up to 400% or down to 0%, but 400 is really loud and I wouldn't recommend using that much. Also, you may have noticed that voiceover actually quiets the other clips in that space. Since it's still loud though, let's go up to the volume button and mute it. All you get now is my voice. If you don't like that, adjust the volume using this slider to about 30%. That's much better. One last note, your audio recordings will show up in the media box if you would like to use them again later. That's the gist of voiceovers. finished, go to the up arrow in the top right corner. Depending on what you have on your computer, there are many places you can export it. For this example, I'm going to save it to my computer with the file button. Give your movie a title and a description. You can play with the quality of your movie if you'd like. I'm going to keep it at the defaults for this example. Hit next and choose its destination. Save it and you are good to go. Overall, iMovie is a really quick and easy application with a variety of features with the potential to improve lessons, especially in CTE classes. We hope that you have found this very helpful and will consider implementing it into your future lessons. Thank you for your time.